Hello and welcome. This week we are going to start moving into the design phase of our website planning. So up until now you've done some initial planning which is incredibly important and it's what gets us to this point. So you've, dis you've determined who your audience is, how you're going to reach them, what you want them to do once they get to your site. Now it's time to start thinking about their experience on the site and then getting into the design, which will be in the next video. So in this case, we, in this particular video, we're talking about a thing called user experience. Just a brief description, what it is, is that experience, the feelings, the frustrations, the positive feelings that a person has using a product. Uh, in particular, you hear it a lot when referencing websites applications like you'd find on your phone or desktop software. So it's usually in relation to some sort of a, an electronic application. So we're thinking about it, of course, in this class from the perspective of how people feel when using your website. So the idea of what user experience is, is that it's the examination or evaluation of how users feel about a system. In other words, as they are moving through it, does the navigation make sense? Is it easy to click on? Do the things that look like buttons, are they actually buttons? Uh, is the layout, does it flow nicely? So these are the things that we are looking at that all are part of user experience. It becomes, it's part of the process of incorporating this user feedback into the design process. We are not going to be doing that in this particular class. There is a class here on campus that is called user experience. Uh, it's part of the uh, interactive media and design program. Uh, so it's a DES 370, I think is the class. So we're not going to go into it that in depth, but it's something I still want you to take into consideration. So some of the core constructs of user experience are things like utility, which means does that user or visitor to your site feel that the functions on your website are useful and fit for the purpose. So think about what we did in the very first assignment where we looked at the purpose of your website and we're using subscription or lead generation models to get people to subscribe or request more information. So do those functions make sense? Do, do, are you providing the information for that? The usability factor. Again, as I just mentioned, is it easy to click on? Do the navigation links make sense? Are they easy to find? Do they follow a logical pattern? Things like aesthetics. Does it fit with the audience that you're, you're aiming for? Because colors can be very emotive, as those of you who are in the cross-media graphics and design programs know these things are very important. So does it fit? Is it visually attractive? Does that layout make sense? Uh, the other, does it feel pleasurable in hand? That's more of a thinking about a device, like a physical device, like say when people are designing new phones or tablets, does that feel pleasurable in the hand? Does it fit right? Identification. This goes into some of the stuff that I asked you to address in your first assignment, which is thinking about the, the audience and who they are. And you want your website to feel like it fits with that particular audience, whoever you identified. Going back to the previous slide, do the, the aesthetics match? Does the utility, in other words, the, the navigation, the names of the buttons, the names of the pages, do they, they fit with something that they perceive? Stimulation, in other words, where is that wow factor? And this is important because this is something I will be grading you on when we get to assignment four, your final web project. Not only can your visitor feel like they fit with it, but does the system, or in our case, the website, inspire them to take that action? get them to subscribe to that newsletter, get them to ask for more information, to look around and stay on your site. And for example, if we were doing an e-commerce site, we would be wanting them to purchase something. Does it inspire them to do that? And then lastly, we have this thing called value, meaning is what is being presented to me and my interactions with it, does it mean anything to me? Is it important to me? Does it fit with 
what my expectations are. This is an important piece. So these are the things that we need to think about when we go into the design process. You have already worked through many of these in determining your audience and thinking about the pages necessary. So the navigation and architecture plan and the funnel plan that you did in assignment two, as well as defining your audience and understanding the purpose of your site in assignment one. Now how we go about collecting this data, which we will not be doing in this class, um, but it's a good thing to know and to understand. If you are working with a large corporation or design service, uh, so an agency of some sort or a web development studio or a branding studio, a lot of what they're going to be doing is they're going to develop what are referred to as personas. In other words, taking what you did in assignment one, where you defined your audience and figuring out who those people are, and they're actually going to write up profiles and oftentimes rep give them a name and a picture and truly give them an identity so that they're trying to appeal to this group of people. Then in order to help them really understand, they're going to conduct interviews and focus groups with who you have identified as your target audience. They will find people, and I, by they, I'm usually talking about there's like user experience experts, um, but they will go out and find these people and ask them questions, get them to use your website in its prototype or early stages. They'll brainstorm and find out what is important to them. And then they will observe users performing specific tasks. So if you have, say, a large website and you're in a beta testing period of your website, you would have people come in and use it and see if the navigation makes sense. You would also look to see if there are some emotional connections. And again, this can be accomplished through interviews and focus groups. But then there is also some really cool biometrics that can be used, which are things like eye tracking software. They can see where people are looking on the screen and how long they're staying there. They can measure their brain activity to see if they are being stimulated by certain content or images that are on your site. Skin tracking, there's sensors that get applied to certain parts of your skin to see if, it, if it's detecting sweat and other sorts of measures, again, to look for stimulation. And facial analysis, which would be looking at expressions. You know, the whole happy, sad, frustrated, that sort of thing. And then finally, there is usability testing. This is where the web develop development team and the user experience team create some tasks. Because, like, think about, in our case, we are trying to get users to sign up for a newsletter or request more information. And in those cases, we would create a task around that and finding out how easy it is or how difficult it is for them to get there. And so while they're doing that, then there will be people who will observe. Sometimes this is behind, like, the, the two-way glass, uh, the mirrors, and they will observe. Sometimes it's with cameras and they can see what's going on and observe those facial, you know, the facial analysis that I mentioned before to see if there are frustrations. They can interview or do what they call talk aloud sections where they ask the person, speak through your experience and how it's going. And then of course there's pre and post surveys evaluating both the expectations ahead of time and then the experience afterwards. And you know what's really cool is we have a fantastic user experience center here on campus. It's over in, on the third floor of Harvey Hall. It just opened this fall. It's phenomenal. They can do eye tracking. They have cameras set up so that they can do observations and analysis. They have uh, tables set up so they can do focus groups and interviews and again there are cameras and there's recording equipment. If you are interested in going over there please let me know and I can pass along some information and they are more than happy to show off what this is and again as I mentioned there is a course I think it's DES 370 that is all about user experience if this is something that you find to be a fascinating part I really think as part of the marketing and branding and ability to connect with your audience that this is an important element of the planning and design process